Hey guys, I'm Lucy and welcome to In Two Minutes, this week set in a galaxy far, far away. Well, not really. Star Wars Battlefront is out this week and while our reviewer Mike Mahardy praised the game for its authenticity to the source material, he ultimately gave it 7 pews out of 10 due to its oh-so-repetitive combat. So maybe it's not the best movie video game of all time? Naturally, that award goes to Snoopy's Grand Adventure. But you've got to admit, things aren't as bad as they used to be, when pretty much every major release was accompanied by a less than stellar video game. Here's some of my personal favorites. The first rule of Fight Club should have been, you do not talk about the truly awful tie-in Fight Club beat-em-up. While it features a number of characters and locations from the movie, I think that's supposed to be Brad Pitt? Sadly, it was an ultimately boring and repetitive fighting game with strangely proportioned characters and a bizarre lack of sound design. On the plus side though, Fred Durst is an unlockable character, which I suppose was good for 2004. Next up, the game that Fallout 4 show host Dave Dewitt called Completely unfinished, abysmal, and a disgusting cash-in on a franchise that didn't even deserve a game. That's right, 2003's Charlie's Angels. Despite featuring the movie's famous cast, including Cameron Diaz, Lucy Liu, and Drew Barrymore, the game was universally panned upon release for its poor gameplay, including unique fighting styles for each angel that all looked remarkably exactly the same. It was rife with bugs, repetitive mission structure, a poor camera, and random AI that were dressed in such a way that they contextually made no sense to the level that they were in. Let's just take a special moment to celebrate superhero movie games because they are pretty much in a Justice League of their own. Like Superman on the N64. That game was bad for a number of reasons, mostly due to its troubled development because of meddling license holders DC and Warner Brothers. In the end, the game suffered from unresponsive flying controls, bugs, a terrible frame rate, and a draw distance that was so poor they had to write a narrative reason to explain why the virtual metropolis was so foggy. And it wasn't any better for Marvel. Despite outliers like Spider-Man 2 and seriously remember how good Spider-Man 2 was, before the days of the shelf-straining Disney Infinity, publishers, <clears throat> Sega, quickly shove out game tie-ins to Phase 1 Marvel movies, whose pretty much only redeeming qualities was that they secured the original actors to reprise their roles, although they quite frequently sounded like they really didn't want to be there. It doesn't matter. They'll suffer for this all the same. And let's finish with perhaps the most infamous, 1982's E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Pushed out of the door in just five weeks to hit that lucrative Christmas release window, E.T. fell so far short of its sales predictions that millions of cartridges were buried in a landfill in New Mexico. Not only that, but the gameplay was so bad because E.T. loved to fall down random holes at every opportunity, that players literally would send E.T. home back to Atari. So are there any that I missed? Any gems in the rough? Spider-Man 2 can't be the only truly decent movie tie-in. Let me know in the comments section below. And a bit of news. Wednesday is basically going to be Lucy Day here on GameSpot. So one week you'll get in two minutes and the next week you'll get that other show, What I Do, Reality Check. Thanks for watching. Don't forget you can find me on Twitter at LucyJamesGames and I'll see you next time.